Hi friends, I'm Emma and I'm a huge book nerd. <laughs> Sorry for being MIA for like two months. Um, once again, life things have happened, things have been crazy. The big exciting news is that I got a new job. So I'm now working at a new place, doing some new stuff, and it's fun and exciting, but that was like a big transition, and I didn't read a ton in that time, and I certainly was not in the mood to film and edit and all of that jazz. But I am back today, so yes. The other big thing is that I'm moving in uh, sort of throughout July, just to another apartment, not moving cities or anything like that. That's the little life update, and now into what we're talking about today, which is sort of a combined April-May wrap-up. The first book that I finished in April is Spring by Allie Smith. Um, this is the third book in a seasonal quartet. It's essentially prose poetry, and it's beautiful, and incredible and I love the whole series so much. I'm actually currently reading Summer. That's how long it's been <laughs> since I made a video, but we'll talk about that another time. But this was lovely. It was wonderful. There were lots of beautiful Shakespeare references in this one. It talks a lot about nature and what we're doing to our world, destroying it, and it was really good. And I highly recommend that you get into this series. Um, the first book is Autumn, so I recommend starting it in the fall. So just put that on your calendars. And I gave this five stars. And then I read People Like Her by Ellery Lloyd. Um, this is a thriller about a woman who is an Instagram mom, and she basically, one of her followers is kind of uh, stalking her and wants to do terrible, awful things to her and her family. So I had heard a lot of really terrible things about this when I first, like, uh, after I had ordered it for my as my book of the month pick, and then I saw a lot of terrible things, and I was like, oh, man wanted to finally get a good thriller from Book of the Month because I feel like all the thrillers I've actually picked from Book of the Month I have not ended up liking which has been really frustrating because like mystery thriller is probably my favorite genre but that's neither here nor there. The point is I actually enjoyed this quite a bit. It wasn't like my new favorite thriller by any means but I ended up giving it four stars and if the premise sounds interesting to you and you like thrillers, then I think it's, I think, I think you would like it, but maybe not because apparently people hate it, so. And then the next book I read, I don't have with me right now because I have lent it to my dad to read, but it is To Shake the Sleeping Self by Jedediah Jenkins, which is um, this sort of memoir about this guy who bikes from Oregon to Patagonia um, over the course of like a little over a year, and it was really really lovely. I feel like I have a hard time with a lot of those types of books like Wild and Eat, Pray, Love. I hated Eat, Pray, Love with a burning passion. I liked Wild a little bit better, but um, I did really enjoy this one, I think, because it was really honest in that it was like, okay, I have all these big questions. I think I'm going to go on this bike trip to change my perspective and like find a new worldview. And by the end of it, it's like, okay, here's what I learned about myself, but like, did I make a huge revelation? Like, is my life completely altered? In some ways, yes, but not in the kind of like dramatic, like eat, pray, love, wild kind of way. I, I just get so annoyed. It's like, really, really? Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, I will stop being annoying about that, but I ended up giving this one five stars as well. And then I read Broken by Jenny Lawson. The publisher was so, 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 so kind and sent me this. Um, I think I think someone on her team saw me like obsessively posting about Jenny Lawson um, a couple months ago when I was like really anxious about the whole job situation because I was like, I need you. <laughs> you are what makes me feel good. And then they were like, hey, do you want this book? And I was like, yes, I do. So 
Anyways, full disclosure, this was sent to me, but because I was already obsessing over Jenny Lawson, so... Um, this was really good. It was all kinds of honest and funny and made me feel like, uh, like I had a friend to talk to about the really hard, not fun, uncomfortable stuff. I will say, I still don't think that this was as good as, Fur as Furiously Happy. Furiously Happy is still just like chef's kiss. I love that book, but this was still a whole lot of fun. It was what I needed in the time. I ended up giving this four stars and I'm so, so glad to have it on my shelf. And now we're entering into books that I read in May. Um, the first of which was an audiobook, The Shadows by Alex North. I had heard a lot about The Whisper Man a while ago, and I hadn't read it yet, but I was looking for just like a thriller audiobook to listen to. I had like some road trips, and so I downloaded The Shadows, and I binged it very quickly, which was fun. I, in my like... <laughs> Goodreads review, which like mostly I write these Goodreads re reviews to remember how I felt about the book when I'm filming these types of videos. Um, but I just wrote Spooky Ooky. So thanks so much, Past Emma. Super, super helpful. But generally, like honestly, it was just, it was fine. It was very fun and it was exactly what I wanted in downloading a thriller audiobook, but it wasn't like, it wasn't particularly memorable. Like I honestly don't remember a ton about it. So yeah, I ended up giving that 3.5 stars. And then I read um, A Long Way from Chicago by Richard Peck, which is a middle grade book that my uh, dad gave me and my sister for Christmas a couple years ago, and I still had not read them. So the book, it's it's part of a series, um, and it's basically about Joey and his little sister Mary Alice as they spend um, nine unforgettable summers with the worst influence imaginable, their grandmother. So like they live in Chicago and their grandma lives, I think, in like Florida or something. And this is also like in the 50s, 40s, 30s. I don't remember. <laughs> this was actually really fun and I really love the grandma character. She's like badass and uh, the kids learn a lot from her and it's very fun. So yeah, I don't know if you're looking for just like a fun like Chicago related middle grade book, check it out I guess. After that I read The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. This I chose for my book of the month pick because First of all, the cover, like I could not stop looking at it. And then also the premise is really cool. So it's about this woman in modern day who's uh, going through a really difficult point in her relationship with her husband. He has cheated on her and she's going on this, or fiance, fiance, I think fiance. Anyways, she's going through a difficult point in her relationship and she goes on this trip to London that they were supposed to go on together, but she goes by herself. And then parallel to that, there is a story happening in the 1800s in London where there's this apothecarist, apothecarist? Woman who runs an apothecary who provides poisons to women who want to kill harmful men in their lives. And it's very interesting. The premise really sucked me in. It was, it's kind of like, it's like murder mystery, historical fiction, a little touch of fantasy, which is like, murder mystery is the only one of those that I would generally go for. Historical fiction and fantasy are not my gig, but I really liked this. I think it'd be a really, really fun fall read. And I ended up giving it four stars. Then I read Tribes by Nina Rain. This was amazing. This is a play about a guy who is born deaf into a hearing family and he meets a girl who is born, uh, her, I believe her parents are deaf and she up until this point has been hearing and is losing her hearing. And um, it's amazing. It's so good. I really wanna see this on stage. Um, it's very, very interesting. So yeah, I gave it five stars. 
And then I listened to another audiobook. I listened to Firestarter by Stephen King. This was fun. I, again, kind of flew through it, binged it. Um, it's definitely not my new favorite Stephen King. It's basically about this man who was part of an experiment when he was in college where he took some sort of like um, steroid or something that he he was not told what the consequences of this would be. It, it, he was just trying to make some extra bucks in college and um, a friend of his also did this and then years later they got married and had a kid together and their kid can start fires with her mind. So she's, and she's also like telekinetic. Is telekinetic one that makes you start fires? She can move stuff with her mind too. Now the government is like after them because she's like this powerful weapon now. So they're trying to get a hold of her and they're on the run. And it was fun. Um, I gave it 3.5 stars. This is turning out to be a long video. I swear we're getting kind of close to the end. Next. I read The Overstory by Richard Powers. This is something else. This is incredible. This is like an odyssey of nature, of trees. It's like, it follows a bunch of different people who all have a connection to trees in some way. It follows them through like most of their lives, like generationally in some cases, and they all come together and they become like the like tree huggers essentially who are literally like trying to prevent deforestation and it's so good it's like again poetry i in some cases read sets of pages multiple times because i was like there's so much happening here that is so beautiful and i need to read it again and again this was like absolutely incredible i ended up giving it 4.5 stars and the only reason it didn't get the full five stars is because i feel like it could have used a little bit of editing in places it was like just a little long-winded here and there but generally it was really good then i read a poetry handbook by mary oliver um finally read another book on writing. It's been a little while for me. It was really good and in some points really inspiring, but generally I would say not one of the most helpful books on writing I've ever read. I do think it's more geared towards people who are kind of starting out with writing. So if you're just kind of getting into writing and you want to know how to be a writer, then like, then yeah, I think I would recommend this. It's just a little bit more like basic but you know always always good always good to return to that so i gave it three stars then i read ask again yes by mary beth keen this had been sitting on my shelf for such a long time and i had heard people compare it to little fires everywhere which i love this i also love this is basically about a boy and girl who are friends from literally from birth and something really, really traumatic happens to their families when they're young, and then they reconnect years later, and it's basically about their relationship and how they forgive each other and forgive each other's families and like how, how far that forgiveness extends and all of that. And it was phenomenal. It was really, really, really good. Um, 4.5 stars. And then, y'all, I read Bad Blood by John Carey Rue. This is about a medical technology company called Theranos um, that was started and run by Elizabeth Holmes. This is all a true story. This is nonfiction, by the way. And basically, Theranos didn't do their science right and lied to everyone about what their their test their blood testing system could do um and it couldn't do those things and it was incredibly harmful to people and they put it on the market when it was essentially just a prototype instead of a finished product they never properly tested it they broke so many laws <laughs> and it was mind-blowing and really 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 interesting i loved this a lot five stars all the way um if you have not heard of this or read this or you don't know about theranos or elizabeth holmes like there are a lot of like true crime podcasts that have done 
uh, episodes on Theranos and Elizabeth Holmes. So like minimum, check those out. But then if you're really interested, read this because it was fascinating. Next, I read The, the Death of Vivek OG by Akweke Amezi. This book was heartbreaking, like completely heart-wrenching, tore out my heart, threw it on the ground, stomped on it, made it bleed, and then burned it in a fire. Um, it hurts. It's painful. It's about this person named Vivek OG in Nigeria. It was assigned male at birth, um, and also in, in Nigeria, in this culture, it's like even less cool to be gay and or trans or non-binary or whatever. But Vivek likes to wear dresses and wear makeup when uh, they're with their friends. Basically at the very beginning of this book, Vivek shows up dead on their mother's doorstep, like just their dead body on the doorstep. And then everyone has to basically go back and learn who Vivek really was because they didn't really know them at all. There were a few things in this that like didn't sit right with me. There's one thing in this that didn't sit right with me, especially when I heard the author talk about it. There's some incest in here, and the author basically said in an interview that they put it in for shock value, and that kind of bugged me because they're talking about like this character who is gay, and this character who's probably trans, and then they're just like, oh yeah, and here's also some incest, as if those are all the same thing. So that was a little weird, that there wasn't like a point. I was like, why, why is that there? It seems strange and a little icky. So anyways, those are my thoughts on that. I ended up giving it four stars. Then I read The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This was lovely. So fun and heartwarming. It kind of made me think of like Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, but with a warmer, fuzzier feeling. Maybe like Miss Peregrine's meets The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry, or like A Man Called Uwe, maybe? I don't know. But this was really lovely. I think I ended up giving it four stars. And then finally, the last book that I read in May was The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name. But I listened to this on audiobook and heck yeah. Heck yeah. Excellent throughout. Phenomenal ending. Very binge worthy. It was the thriller that I wanted. It was the thriller that I needed. And if you didn't know, one of the June book of the month picks is this author's next book. And you can bet that I picked it and I'm very excited about it. And I can't wait to read it. Yeah, I ended up giving The Silent Patient five stars. And those are all of the books that I read in April and May. I know that is a lot. I'm sorry this video is so long. I hope that's kind of nice to have after I've been gone for a little bit, but I don't Anyways, <laughs> thank you for watching this. Thank you for still being here. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Mwah.